What up everybody, it's Aaron here with Robert and this is Get Your Geek On and this is our segment, Cereal is a Soup and it is, it's even not. if he says it's not. No, it Cereal is. is not a soup and we're not going to have that argument again, but this is a segment where we like to present an opinion. Sometimes it's controversial, sometimes it's not, and then we just talk about it, um, we might defend it, we might attack it, we'll just see where it goes. So this is my opinion. This is his this week. Right? And so, my, in my opinion, All right. what I think is that Captain America, the first Avenger, is the best origin movie in the MCU. Now, there are a lot of them. We've got Iron Man. We've got Thor. We've got, of course, Captain America. Um, we've got Ant-Man. We've got Doctor Strange. We've got Captain Marvel. We've got Black Panther. Um, I'm not going to count Black Widow. I don't think that was an origin movie. Did you count Spider-Man? Um, Spider-Man Far From Ho or, uh, Spider -Man Homecoming is sort of an origin movie. Let's throw it in there. Um, I'm trying to think. You know, The Guardians of the Galaxy, I guess, is an origin movie, but that's a team. It's not a solo, right? It's still up there. It's still up there. It's up there. Um, so there's a lot of origin movies. Uh, how in the, the MCU. Uh, that No, in the MCU. <laughs> Like, The Incredible Hulk is not an origin story. He's already Hulk when that movie starts, that's right? True. So that's not an origin story. Um, now, I want to clarify. I actually, I don't think that Captain America, the first Avenger, is the best movie of that bunch. Because I think Black Panther is actually the best movie of that okay. bunch. But the reason that I think it's the best origin story is because I think this is the movie that best establishes the character that its story is focusing on. Okay. So I think like Black Panther, again, I think it's a great movie. But I think it's a great movie because of all of the elements around it. Um, I think actually, as much as I love Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther, I think I prefer his performance in something like Civil War mm -hmm. as I do to Black Panther. I think what elevates Black Panther is the story, the villain, all of the you know very strong characters around him like M'Baku and Shuri <laughs> and... You know, all of those things. Like, And I do love the character of Black Panther also. I just, like, as an origin movie, I don't think it really is um, as strong as something like Captain America. And the reason that I really think Captain America stands above <coughs> the rest is because unlike, I think, every other origin movie with possibly the exception of the Phase 1 origin movies, Iron Man and Thor... We really get to spend time with Captain America. We get to spend time with Steve Rogers before he's Captain America. We spend a ton of time with him trying to enlist, right? Spending time, like we see him get into a fight in a back alley that he, we know he can't win. We see him, you know, again, trying to enlist and, and enter the army. We see him getting the chance to prove himself and trying to go through basic training. And he's weak and all those things, but he's also, he's never going to give up. He's going to jump on the grenade. He's going to outsmart everyone else. We're going to establish all of the traits that make him who he is, as Dr. Erskine says, not a perfect soldier, but a good man. Mm -hmm. And so even though I think there are points of that movie that fall apart a little bit, um, the third act is not great. The montage stuff, you know, it's like, okay, this is whatever it is. I think it so perfectly encapsulates that character who then goes on to appear in the Avengers, of course, his sequels, Winter Soldier and Civil War, all of the other future Avengers movies. And you can draw a straight <clears throat> line through his character beats in a way that you can't do with really all the other movies. Think of like the character of Iron Man. His storyline does a lot of weird things in Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3. Thor, you know, with its weird stuff that's going on in, like, Thor the Dark World, and even some of the stuff that happens with him in, like, uh, Age of Ultron. Like, it's just, there. This the through line of that character, of those characters, n is not as strong as someone like Captain America, where I think, again, that character, he does change, but only in the way he relates to the world. His internal kind of uh, makeup is as strong in Endgame as it is in Captain America the First Avenger. He is a character who changes the people around him much more than he gets changed. 
-hmm. And I just think that that movie just so perfectly establishes who Steve Rogers is and why he is the successful super soldier, why he is Captain America. And so even though I don't think it's the best origin story movie, I think it is the best origin story for a character in the MCU. What say you? Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sitting here thinking. I'm trying to like remember all the movies and just I kind of like not zoned out, but I'm like I'm trying to remember like okay, how was Iron Man? How was Thor? How was right. Ant Man? How's technically Guardians? And first of all, I'm I'm gonna eliminate Guardians, like you said, team movie. Yeah. I'm gonna eliminate which if that wasn't if that was about a singular character, like it does establish who the who the Guardians the are. Yeah. And and so it's like <clears throat> I can see that, but it's also like yeah, it's it's a yeah, team. it's yeah. a team movie. Like you said, Black Widow is not. An origin story she's already established by this point right i have to take out spider-man because technically we don't have an origin story in that film he's already established right it's a one line that he tells yeah uh what's his face ned ned and that's it yeah that's uh, the, the origin we don't get the origin of his powers uh, but we do get the origin of him like being a hero yeah and that's really yeah so tomato tomato yeah you could put that in there if you wanted i guess but i'm gonna take it out yeah and then Wow, like Ant Man, I think you're right. Ant Man, we don't. Ant Man, I think would be the closest second, actually. I don't know. It's hard for me with Ant Man because I feel like it very well establishes who the character is, yeah. but it, I don't think it establishes him as a particularly heroic character. But that's the whole point. He's not. He's not supposed to be a heroic, and this is his journey getting there, but that's still an origin, though, of I was a good man who did bad things to fix the, yeah. the good, but. Again, it's if we're just saying an origin. We're not saying a heroic origin story. We're just saying an origin That's story. true. That's true. So to me, he's actually a close second because I'm looking at Robert Downey in the first Iron Man, but technically we spent a lot of time with Rhodey and him. And this is kind of both of them rising up. And if you watch the deleted scenes, it's heavily about Rhodey, to be honest, versus Iron Man more. So, yeah, that it's good. I mean, again, I love Iron Man. One of my favorite yeah. movies still. Sets up everything we get later in life. Yeah, and I and but, I think I love that movie too. And I do... I, I think the, the thing that really detracts from that being a great origin story is Iron Man 2. When yeah. he kind of just takes steps back. He's exactly. not the character that he is by the end mm. of the first Iron Man. And with something like Thor, I think what really hurts that is even though I love that first movie, the lessons of humility that he learns in the end of that first They're movie, gone. I don't really see that throughout the rest no. of his journey especially, and it's like wait a second, like that's especially when it gets to Ragnarok to me. He's more just being like, yeah, I can still like what's his name? Where he, the very beginning of the film, it's a funny opening with Surtur, yeah. Yeah, that's but what heroes do. This is yeah. what heroes do, but at the same time he's still like I can take you. Like I know I can take you. There's not even a, a chance you can beat right. me. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kill you. Right. And it's just one of those again. There should be some of a little worry. Like mm, this yeah. is still a freaking god as well. Like, right. Do you think you could just take him down like nothing? Like he rules this this whole world anyway. Right. But yeah, I really think the closest second would be Ant Man. I'm actually gonna put that there. But I think you're right. I think Cap. We spend a good... The good first act is Steve Rogers, the man. Yeah. We set up that he's all determined. Like you said, always applying to the military under different names. Mm -hmm. And again, not necessarily evil, but that is illegal to do when you try to it enlist. Is. But back in World War II, a lot of underage people did lie about their age, their sure. names, everything to support the country, yeah. to support the world, let's face it, against yeah. Nazism. Yeah, I mean, my, my grandfather had polio as a child, and so he actually had a deformity in oh, his really? foot. Mm -hmm. um, and he did the same thing. He tried to enlist, and of course they would not let him because, yeah. he, you know, he, he was not physically You've fit become enough. a liability, they say. Um, but, you know, he ended up, like, guarding prisoners stateside, mm -hmm. you know, because it was like, well, I can't do nothing. You know, yeah. so that that is the mentality, and again, like that that is not necessarily unique to Steve Rogers in this no. universe, but what is unique to him is again the the way the outlook on life that he has, and I think one of the key scenes in that movie is <clears throat> when he's again trying to enlist, and Doctor Erskine is the one that comes in, and he's like, you know, and he just asks him, "Do you want to kill Nazis?" and he, and he doesn't say. Yes, I yeah. want to. You know, I want to destroy Nazis or anything. It's not the, he the typical answer. Yeah, I want to go kill a Nazi. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna go you kill know, fascism. He, he says, you know, I don't want to kill anybody. I don't like bullies. Yeah, I don't care where they're from. 
Um, I think that's the best line for Steve. And it just, it is, it boils everything about his character down to that moment. Yeah. And you see it, like, he doesn't, that's, that's what he, you know, he doesn't like bullies. And, and anybody that is pushing the little guy around, that's a bully and I'm gonna, you know, yeah. I'm gonna take him out. And I think that's what I like about him more in, in the comics. Originally, he never had a gun. Right. You know, we rewrote him later because, like, oh, well, he kind of needs a gun because he does need to fight people. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm like, mm, I kind of like him without the gun because it makes, like you said, it makes him think he's a brilliant tactician. Yep. I can't shoot you. You're over there. So I'm going to bounce the shield here, 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 and it's going to hit you because it breaks the laws of physics. It sure that's does. what it does. And as, even Spider-Man calls Spider-Man that would say, yes. And it's like, I think that's a better Steve than a Steve with a gun. You know, but we get the gun in the film. Like, he is barging in with the Howling Commando shooting everybody. Sure. But yeah, I think you're right. I think we get a good Steve Rogers from the start to finish. His character is established and never changes throughout the entire MCU. He sticks up for Bucky because he's like, this is my best friend. This is what I do. I stick up for my best friend like he stuck up for me when I was... And we got that in Captain America, the first Avenger. He stuck up for me. He helped me fight the guy in the alley. He was there when we raided the train. When we rescued the Howling Commandos and all of that stuff. He was there. So I'm going to be there for him. You know, he's paying his dues, he could almost say, yep. to Bucky. And then in Civil War, like you said, they're kind of bullying the superheroes around. Well, you know, this is wrong. You should just let us do what we want. And then he's lived through the part where, well, yeah, look what happened when we let the government choose other things and all this other stuff would happen. You I know, mean, yeah, yeah. look at yeah, his cool. line in Winter Soldier, this isn't freedom, this is fear. Exactly. You know, like, it's it's the same You're type of thing. To everybody's head. Right. And so, yeah, I just, again, I, I think, and I, and, I want to be clear that I love everything in the MCU. And oh, there's, yeah, I, there's not a single movie in there that I don't like. There are parts of movies that I, you know, kind of check out on. He doesn't have a Man of um, Steel in the MCU. No. <laughs> um, but I will say that, you know, like Captain America, the first Avenger, I think, I think it is the worst of the Captain America movies, which is only saying that the Winter Soldier and Civil War are both incredible. Great like, those are, you know, top... Like, I think Winter Soldier is a top three MCU movie for me. Civil War is probably, you know, like, near the bottom of the top ten. And Captain America the First Avenger is probably just outside of the top ten. So they're all in the top half yeah. of movies that I enjoy um, in the MCU. They're all really, really good. And, again, even though I think something like Black Panther, I think Iron Man, um, and I'm trying to think of other origin movies, I think... I think Black Panther, Iron Man, and Spider-Man Homecoming, I think, on their face are all better movies right. than Captain America the First Avenger. Um, but I think that as far as origin movies, this is the best one of the MCU. I can't say it's the best superhero origin movie of all time, um, because I do think that there have been uh, other ones done better. I think so, too. But, but I think, yes, in the right. MCU... I gotta give it to Cap. I'm gonna have to go with you on this. I think you're correct. I think this is the the better movie. I think I think Cap is all Cap all around is a good hero. Is this cereal is a soup? You know, like history. We history. agree completely. Yes. I don't. No, there's been a couple other times. I think. I think there's been a couple other times we might have won the person over with an yeah. argument, but I don't know that this. No, is, I started off agreeing. With I think you. this might be the first time where we're just like we agree. Yeah, like I said, I, I agree with that because my my competition in my head, of course, was Ant Man. Yeah. Like, how good is Ant-Man as an origin story? And again, I'll agree with you, not a heroic, a heroic thing, but a good origin because we get the background, we get the character, and he doesn't really change either. Yeah, we um, do. And, and I would say that what, what motivates and drives him in that movie is, like, his family. And that never and changes. That has that continues in Ant-Man and Wasp. It continues in his appearance in Endgame. Yep. Um, so I will agree that I think it does... It does a really good job of establishing who that character is, but I think again, what separates what separates them out is just that we the the time we spend with the characters before they get their powers, or in Ant Man's case, his suit. Yeah. I like what we get with Steve Rogers more than I like what we get with Scott Lang. Yeah, I'll uh, give you that. And that's really what it's like. We can see from the first 30 minutes of, of Captain America where he's not the super soldier, we can see that the super soldier is inside him already. He doesn't have the serum, but he's already that guy. He's saying that Tony's line was wrong. He's already Captain America. Yes, it's not the everything special about you came out of the bottle, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Um, we see story. all the special things yeah. because the movie takes us time to show it. I don't know that the movie takes us the time to show us Scott Lang, mm -hmm. the character, um, in as much depth before he that. gets the Ant-Man suit. And I will. I will give you that, and that's what I say. I think it's a good second, though. Yeah, I will say that because okay. that was my competition was them two, and I I bow out to what you say because you're right on how Captain America is portrayed on that. But like I said, I think you're right. I think it. It is better because again, Iron Man, even though it's a good movie, he doesn't come close. I'm sorry, like you said, especially after two and three, it's it goes all wonky, really, and it's like ah. yeah, it's the the later movies hurt who that character is established. Yeah, it doesn't help. Or like movie. you said, Cap's getting built up, and even Ant-Man is getting built up, and even yep. in Endgame, what's the first thing he does? He looks for his daughter. Yep. It's not I'm gonna go find the Avengers. I'm not gonna go right see what's going on. It's like where's my daughter? Where yep. is she? Mm -hmm. And that's it. And that was his first thing. And Absolutely. he hugs her and he loves her and everything. And it's like, okay, cool. I'm happy now. I'm, and then I'm his okay. motivation for doing the time heist is basically to get hope back. Exactly. Like his his daughter didn't get snapped away. She's still there. But it's I'm I want hope. Yeah. You know. And again, it's about uh, the family. Hope. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, guys. On that note, we're done here with this. Let us know down what you think is the best origin story in the mcu not counting it like what we said not counting the ones we have eliminated i'll say but let us know what you think yeah. of course comment and check out all of our other videos our reviews we have some coming out this week we have a halo reach retrospect review last week we had res please and there'll be more that'll be coming out guys throughout the weeks so let us know what you think of everything and of course stay geeky and get your geek